Are you sure I can't fetch the doctor, Mr. Porter? No, no. Thank you, Mr. Porter. You shouldn't put them in your clothes. You've got a casket. If I could keep them all close, I feel it, you know, as if it were cut out of me. It was a big stone you lost. It wasn't the size. It was the purity. It was flawless. Even she could never create such a thing. She? Have you ever known a truly pure soul, Mr. Porter? My boy, I, I suppose, my son. <laughs> Though he's a little beggar now. You'd do anything for him, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yes, I would. Yes, yes, of course you would. And when he's not so pure, you'd still do anything. But you'd hate him for it. Look. But lock up your boxes, Mr. Pullman. It's getting stormy out there. Let me know if you need anything. He's a... He's a good sort, Mr. Porter. You trust him? As I trusted you? Oh, please. Please don't. I never wanted to hurt you, Gerard. I know, I know, my love, I know. But I would... How did you get in here? Oh, you really do have an axe. Doctor. Well, I thought she was bluffing. I'm not afraid to use it, neither. Ah, watch those jars! We're not thieves, I promise you. You broke in, didn't you? You left the door open. <laughs> Please, stop swinging the axe. Show her your, your paper thing. What? Oh, uh, catch. It's my ID. Your what? That's the King's seal. Oh. Oh, I do beg your pardon, my lord. Honestly, there's no need to curtsy. All look so scared. If it's about what they owe on this place, I know nothing about it. I'm at number 40 and we're up to date. You do dress like a tax collector. It is the overcoat. Well, now that's all settled, maybe you could answer some questions, Mrs... Uh... Uh, Brokepot. <laughs> Franny Brokepot. Naturally. And my husband, Edwin, upstairs. He's infirm. Gout. It's his axe. Marvellous. I look after Mr Pullman's workshop while he's away. It's all above board. Well, not quite, Mrs Brokepot. I knew it. He said two years. It's been six. And she's still nowhere to be seen. His wife? Wife, was she? I never saw a ring on her finger. She made it all, but never wore any. Oh, so Mrs Pullman was the jewellery maker, not her husband? Gerard? A big child collecting shiny stones? Not that he wasn't good at it, but obsessive, you know. Then he meets Miss Amara, and now he's got two obsessions. Well, had. Oh? I don't know anything. Oh, on the contrary, Mrs Brokepot. You seem to know a great deal. Oh, I can't help it. The walls are so thin. I can hear Edwin snoring all night long. No, we don't sleep in the same bed. How could we? I can't run all this with a fuzzy head. Focus, Franny. They were rowing and rowing. The Pullmans. When was this? Before he went off to the Orient. She said she was leaving and he wasn't having any of it. Then there was this big bang. An implosion? A what? Opposite of an explosion. No, like a bang on the head, you know, with a poker. Or an axe? I never did nothing. Mrs Brokepot, what was Miss Amara like? Did you know her? A lot like you, actually. Except her hair was black. Like Whitby Jet. With small, amber eyes and a very square jaw, as if cut with a diamond chisel. So, not like me at all. But she had the exact same look. Like gunpowder seeing a spark. A tiger bunched up on her hair, all ready to go. Oh, I'm not making sense. Oh, no, no, I get all of that, yeah. She knew she'd made a mistake, moving in with a fanatic. Most are around here, of course. But Gerard Pullman, he got a glint in his eye over gems... Had to have the best. Possess him. I don't think Miss Samara liked being collected. It's what they're all saying, Captain. Look at the skies! That Pullman is cursed and he's the cause of the storm. I might be new, Porter, but I don't share your superstitions. Then you've no place mastering a ship. What? No offence, sir, but this voyage should never have been agreed to. It's too much on the lads, even when Mr. Pullman gave them trinkets for their lasses. A generous gesture he didn't need to make. And shouldn't have. 
Opening vast boxes of treasures like some, some king. The man's made no attempt to hide his wealth. And why should he? He's earned it over a lifetime. You know the wages the company pay. These boys have got to pay for their kit, their food, they're in debt before they even come aboard. And Pullman parading on deck with some body belt full of jewels. Oh, stop it, Porter, stop it now. Ah, oh, tell me you've never thought it yourself. I have a son, John. He's six. Castleton's got a baby and his wife's dead. Your mother's a widow. Everyone on this ship knows what it's like to scrape by for someone they love. I like Mr. Pullman, but all them stones for one man. He has a wife. Yeah, has he indeed. You've heard how he speaks of her. You sure she ain't in that cabin? In the biggest crease of all? So, according to Franny Brokepot, Gerard Pullman's a murderer. Yes, according to the axe-wielding Fanny Brokepot. Well, we seem to be breeding mysteries, not solving them. Who buried the Cheapside Horde and why? How did Pullman get his hands on a banned alien compound? And why did he kill Miss Amara? And where did I leave the TARDIS? Or why did she kill oh, him? Oh, every time. Well, I've got a theory. They're jewel thieves. That's the only time I've used Carabra Sight. What? a tiny bit. Not to steal jewels, but but I did blow a safe. Can you say all this a bit louder? I'm not sure the Watchmen of London heard you. Well, it's the number one choice for a controlled entry. Or a demolition. Oh, here she is. <laughs> exactly. That's why Corralthrocyte got banned in the first place. An intelligent, volatile compound that responds to coded biological programming. A living bomb. Capable of destroying a single cancerous cell or an entire planet, depending on the programmer. And you can count the number of people clever enough to control it on one hand. I'm not sure I want someone able to control Caralthrocyte in my TARDIS. Why not? I can fly her better than you. Just get off! If Gerard Pullman is a time traveller operating from a workshop in 17th century Cheapside... Where no one can detect his technology... He still needs to have got his Caralthrocyte from somewhere. If we start tracing his source, we'll attract the attention of every law enforcer in the galaxy. Hmm. Somehow I imagine you wouldn't like that. Oh, you're getting to know me very well. But in 1912, Gerard's Caralthrocyte is killing people. So, maybe we risk it. The Cheapside Horde. How did Caralthrocyte get into the Cheapside Horde? Chauncey said some of those jewels were counterfeit. You said Pullman's workshop was an alchemist's den. He and his wife have been making fake jewels, loaded with Caralthrocyte. That's it. That's it! It still doesn't help us. Someone buried a heap of jewels in a Tudor cellar and a bunch of navvies dug it up in 1912. Yes. And it became famous, the most spectacular find of historical jewellery on Earth. An unsolvable mystery, sparking exhibitions, books, papers... Research! Every detail was catalogued, not just the jewels. Here, look, floor plans of the cellars, shop names, rent collectors... We saw all this. Yes, but that was before we knew his name. Gerard Pullman. Ah, and now we know what happened to him. Oh, dear. Drop it! Drop it! Now, do you see it? It's taking lives! No one has died on this ship, Porter, and no one will. Whoa! <laughs> Lash yourself to a mask, man! I gotta look after precious Mr. Bowman and I, lest his fortune sinks to the bottom. The, the storm's dying down. We'll we'll sail out of it. Captain, you lose control of this ship. That is your career finished. Because we warned you, and every man here will testify to that. <laughs> no one will blame you, John. He has a loose cannon on deck. With a storm, the rest of the fleet will save.